In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Financial Services Representative Michael Libman with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls. I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing in estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls. I can't ask me. Yeah. Don't ask me. Those good point. Things, that's a good point. Those things you don't think to check on until you bring it up on the air, and then you, you know, have to sound ignorant. But that's not a stretch for you and I week to by week. It comes so naturally. That's right. Austin Sparrow will kick off for McComb as the uh, Bombers won the toss and deferred to the second half. So Austin Sparrow will kick things off here tonight. And QD will be moving from left to right with this opening possession. Bombers in their white road uniforms with black pants, orange trim. White jerseys with black numbers and orange trim and orange helmets with the Bomber logo on each side. q and &E in their home blue on blue with uh, blue jerseys, blue pants, white numbers, gold trim, and of course, golden dome. Austin Sparrow will get things started, and away we go. It's a short angle kick to the far side. It will come to the Raiders, Zach Bailey. Bailey up the middle of the field. He's got plenty of room, and he bursts through, and he may go. He's at the 45-40, 35-30, 25-20, and goodbye. Zach Bailey takes the opening kick back about 75 yards, and the Raiders are on the scoreboard 15 seconds into this game. Well, nice play by Bailey there, showing off the speed. We've seen Q and D oftentimes, vast majority of times, go to the uh, sideline, sideline return. That time they just go the old basic right up the middle. Bailey breaks maybe one tackle, then outruns uh, Zach Wilson, the sophomore for the Bombers, and goes mostly untouched. I mean, maybe one or two hand people got a hand on him. That's about it. Bailey's showing off the speeds and the Raiders on the board 15 seconds into the game. And uh, in reading the newspaper article about the game last week against Monmouth Roseville, McComb had trouble with a couple of kicks in that game, but Martel Wilson is a very fine, uh, not only basketball player, but uh, football player for Monmouth Roseville, and he was able to take a couple of long runs back last mm -hmm. week against McComb. So the Raiders on the board with the opening kickoff, and looks like Zach Bailey will attempt the extra point if he can catch his breath. <laughs> Jordan Chapel will hold, snap back is true, the kick is up, and it's good. So I guess the Raiders decided Zach Bailey's got all kinds of positive momentum. Let's just have him attempt the extra point. Yeah, 15 seconds into the game, and Zach Bailey, seven points, Bombers zero. So uh, what a start for Q&D. What a start for Bailey. And uh, how about the McCombs' decision to defer and kick off? I bet they're looking at each other going, why did we make that decision? <laughs> well, you yeah, know, and they got it to, you know, certainly it's been Chapel and, and, uh, and some welfer on the uh, special teams for Q&D making some big plays. So Bailey getting in the mix as well, and... Uh, what a start for Q&D. Uh, couldn't think of a better way to get some of that uh, taste out of their mouth than last week. You mentioned the pregame. Don't have to go back into it. But, you know, like I said, Q&D probably foaming at the mouth to get back out on the field so they can play some real good football. So the Raiders lead it by the score of 7 nothing. We played 15 seconds as Zach Bailey took the opening kickback. I'm going to say about 75 yards. It might have been a little bit farther than that. But uh, it was short of the 20 anyway. And then it, it was uh, Bailey who took it, Kyle. He was uh, on the left side of the kickoff return and uh, kind of uh, brought it towards the middle. Wasn't much of a, you know, he didn't go a long way to take it from the left wing to the uh -huh. middle, but just enough to just take it up the middle of the field. And you're right, there was maybe a lunge at him, and I'm not sure if there was much contact or, or any contact at that point. But from that point on, it was uh, you know, just a matter of him not getting tackled around the ankles, and Zach Bailey was able to run it the distance and, and take it 75, 80 yards. Yeah, it, it was. It was a real nice run. It looked like uh, Zach Wilson, number nine for the Bombers, again, had oh, it looked like he might have had an angle there on for a minute, but barely turned on the Jets, but uh, didn't wear himself out too much that he couldn't kick the extra point. So 
Terrific start for number 28. And Zeke Little will get it back in action here. His kick is long and deep, and D.J. Williams will take it at his own one-yard line. His heels actually touch the goal line. Williams Kelly will take it to the far side. He runs through a couple of ankle tackles. He has one man to beat. He ran over Zeke Little, and D.J. Williams Kelly will be caught by Blake Kilgenbrink, but not until Williams Kelly takes it inside the Raider 30 to about the 26-yard line. <laughs> nice, another nice return, and... Good hustle from Blake Hilgenbrink to run him down. I thought they might get him for a horse collar tackle. He, he did the sure tackle there. He didn't want to dive, dive, at, uh, dive at his knees, so he went ahead and got him around the shoulder pads and brought him down. And finally, we're going to see an offense take the field, an offense and a defense take the field. So McComb will take over first and 10 at the Raider, 26-yard line. Tanner Wetzel will be the quarterback. Jacob Poor has a bad shoulder. He hurt last week during the game against Monmouth Roseville. He gutted his way through that game, but... He was questionable before the game tonight, and Wetzel will get the start. Out of the uh, Veer offense, it's Wetzel keeping it. He's trying to come around the corner, and he'll be knocked down short of the line of scrimmage, Bailey around his ankles. Jeffrey Haley also with some good penetration, and Austin Tappy getting the start tonight for Matt Horvath, also in on the play. So it's a loss of about a yard. It'll be second and 11 for McComb. Nice, uh, nice pursuit there by Q&D. The guy we're going to want to keep an eye on offensively for the Bombers is number 32, Reed Sprinkle, kind of the go-to man as the running back went for 235 yards on 30 carries in their victory over Pittsfield in week two. So, uh, you know, certainly a key for Coach Cannell in this defense tonight. Slow down Sprinkle, and you can probably slow down this Bomber offense. Second and 11 for McComb from the Raider 27. Ball on the near hash. Out of the veer, wing back to the right side. They give it to Blake Driscoll, and he slashes through the hole. Gets it inside the Raider 25 to about the 23. We'll give Driscoll a gain of four. They'll bring up third and seven for McComb. Looks like QND coming out uh, tonight in a 5-3. We haven't seen a ton of 5-3 uh, so far this year from QND. I don't know if it's drawn from specifically the Bomber offense or maybe some of the injuries and the placements uh, to get the right personnel they want. So we'll see if they can adjust to the 5-3 here and get themselves in position most, more often than not. Of course, now they're in a 4-4 on this third down play. On third and seven from the Raider 23. Single back is Reed Sprinkle, I believe, as Tanner Wetzel looks over the Raider defense. He has three receivers split to the far side. And Wetzel will take. He fakes. He still has it, and he throws it right to the Raider defender, but it's dropped incomplete. Brady Ginnebacher had to kind of lunge to his right, and that ball was thrown more in his direction than it was the receiver, but that's why he's a backup quarterback, Tanner Wetzel. <laughs> well, I'm not, I, I think I'm trying to catch the, the uh, number there, the intended receiver. I think it was uh, Bryce Westing, but... I think he was expecting Westing to keep cutting up field. Ginnenbacher sniffed, uh, snuffed it out pretty early, and I think Westing kind of, he might, he might have just kind of given up on his route there. Right. He threw it too far upfield, and uh, I think it caught Ginnenbacher a little bit off, uh, a little bit off guard. Tanner Wetzel went all the way to the far sideline to get the play call from the coaching staff, and now brings it to the huddle. And there's only 11 on the play clock because of that. So I think McCombs going to have to call a timeout because Wetzel has to read the play off his wristband. And they're getting to the line of scrimmage, Harm McComb, with 5-4-3. They're going to have to go on a quick count here, and they barely get the play off. And they're going to set up a middle screen. No, it's a Statue of Liberty yeah. play, and Reed Sprinkle is blown up for a yard loss. So on fourth and seven, Sprinkle gets his, uh, or gets his first carry of the game, and he'll lose about two yards, actually. And the Raiders take over on downs just inside their own 25-yard line. Yeah, a nice try there from uh, McComb there on the fourth down play. Statue of Liberty play, Sprinkle unable to get the yards he needed. Uh, kind of an interesting play call. That was Sprinkle's first carry of the game. So, you know, probably trying to uh, not go to their key guy. So kudos to the q &E defense there with a big stop after the long return from Williams Kelly. 9.49 left to go first quarter. q &E leads 7-0. And the first give of the game offensively is Dalian Anders. He puts the ball on the ground. But the Raiders jump on it. Anders kind of got uh, pushed oh, sideways, wow. and the ball was... Uh, in his hands, but laying out there, and it got poked out of his hands by a Macomb defender, but one of the Raiders was able to jump on it. Anders picks up about three, maybe four. Yeah, and I thought for sure Keeney was going to lose that one. It looked like it fell right between two or three bomber defenders. So Anders, uh, Anders and Q and D, and at least me, certainly pleasantly surprised Q and D retains possession. Ball in the middle of the field, second and six Q and D from their own 29. I formation, quick count, give it to Brady Ginnebacher. And it looked like he almost lost he the ball. Fumbled. He did fumble, and McComb has it at the 30-yard right. line. So two plays for QNE, two fumbles. Anders fumbled, QNE recovered, Ginnenbacher fumbles, and McComb recovers at the Raider 30-yard line. 
I'm waiting for something normal to happen here tonight. <laughs> Two, a kickoff return, another long kickoff return, a Statue of Liberty play, and then back-to-back -back fumbles from Q&D offensively. So another drive here for McComb to take uh, to start in uh, with, with tremendous field position. Last drive started at the Raider 24. This drive starts at the Raider 30 for McComb. First and 10. They fumbled the snap. Tanner Wetzel and his center, Bryce Mappin, failed to make connections on the exchange, but Reed Sprinkle jumped on it for a loss of two. It'll be second and 12 for McComb. Somebody call a timeout. A nice uh, heads-up play there for Sprinkle for his second carry of the game, if you will. Obviously, that one not being uh, quite as they drew up. That's not exactly the fumble Ruski is that's supposed to no, it wasn't. be run. So Tanner Wetzel, the backup quarterback, starting tonight in place of Jacob Poor, gets to the line of scrimmage. Veer with the wing, Hunter Minot, to the left side. He goes straight across the line of scrimmage in motion. They give it to Reed Sprinkle, and he's bottled up. And uh, Jimmy Case was trying to strip the ball out of Sprinkle's hands, but couldn't pry it loose. But Sprinkle gets no gain on the play. It'll be third and 12 for McComb. Well, I know we said a lot uh, in last year's ball games against Macomb, but if you can really put this bomber team in second and eight, or mm -hmm. second and seven or more, and certainly you know third and seven, th you know third and six or more, CUNY's going to have an awful lot of success. They uh, forced, uh, you know, when they had the most success last year, was putting Macomb in those positions. They're not real used to passing. They don't want to pass a lot, and even tonight more so with Wetzel, the backup quarterback, getting the start because of an injury. Once again, McComb breaks the huddle very late. There's six on the play clock as they're just getting set. Now they're actually getting set with four on the play clock. Wetzel looks things over, and the clock goes to zero, and that should be a five-yard penalty, but they don't throw the flag, and then the running play is stuffed by QND. Looks like the officials are giving McComb the benefit of the doubt, knowing all the uh, injuries and new quarterbacks and everything else. And Minot got the carry, and he picked up a, about a yard, so it's fourth and a long 11 for McComb from the Raider 31-yard line. Well, first contact and tackle that, t uh, that time made by Jeff Haley. No, nice job by number 65, the uh, uh, interior lineman for QND. So Haley forcing a fourth and long, and looks like QND set mostly back in his 4-4 defense uh, since the first snap, and they'll stay in this 4-4 here on this fourth and 10. Minot is the lone setback. It's trips to the far side. Ball on the near hash on fourth and 11. Wetzel stands up, fires, and it's picked off. Picked off by the Raiders and going the other way down the far sideline, and he should be able to go, and he will. Right. Logan, Logan Shirley with a good hands interception from his linebacker position, and he'll take it to the house. But there is a hat laying on the McComb side of the 50-yard line, but I don't know if that's a coach's hat or an official's hat. It's an official's hat, uh -huh. and I'm not sure what that means. Was there an illegal block? It must have been. Yeah, there's a flag laying at the Raider 29. Uh, yeah. So Logan Shuddy with a great interception, well, but that's coming back. I, well, it might have be illegal procedure against the Bombers. It didn't look like they were, you know, there was some movement right before they snapped. I don't think they were quite set. Okay, so you're saying maybe illegal formation since they didn't blow the play dead. And now the same official threw one flag and then threw his hat because there was another infraction. Well, terrific Coach play. Cannell, Coach Cannell got told what was going on by the linesman, and he turned and looked at his the end of his bench and went, what? So they call it illegal block in the back on the Raiders on the return, but it is an interception for Logan Shuddy. And I don't know why they're talking to Logan Shuddy when the penalty's on QND. <laughs> I, I suppose they're going to... Uh, one of the Q&D captains here asking Shuddy for what they need to do. Oh, I, I guess. He just says, let me catch my breath. <laughs> well, I guess they called the illegal motion on McComb. That was the first penalty. Uh -huh. So I guess if the Raiders accepted it, they wouldn't get the ball. So that was kind of silly to ask a Q&D captain. Well, it was fourth down, I suppose. I suppose they, right. well, I guess it would be just fourth down again. That's the thing. Q&D would not yeah, get possession right. of the ball. It would be fourth and even longer for McComb, but McComb would have the ball. This way, Q&D declines the penalty. Now McComb takes the block in the back, which happened apparently at the Q&D 40, or excuse me, the McComb 45, and that will take the ball back to the Q&D 44. So Q&D has possession, 7-0 Q&D leads because of Zach Bailey's opening kickoff return for a touchdown. And now the Raiders, after the pick, had the ball at their own 44, first and 10, and they go the spread here. Dalen Anders, sidecar right, 
Two by two, the receivers. Ball in the middle of the field. Joe McKay takes the snap from Jimmy Case, looking over the middle. Fires high through the hands of Jordan Chappell and complete. High and a little bit behind Chappell. Second and 10, Q and D. The time McKay and his shotgun there hesitated for just a second. I think he wanted to get rid of that ball a little bit earlier, but was uh, waiting for that lane to clear. And by the time he got the lane he wanted, fired it just a little bit high. So Q and E kind of shaking things up after the two fumbles on the first drive and letting Joe McKay get back there and fire it. Ball in the middle of the field, second and 10, Q&E from their own 44. Two by two, the receivers out of the spread inside give Dale and Anders. He will end up with about three yards. Dale and Anders takes it to about the 48-yard line. Just short of the 48, so it'll be third and about seven for q and I like the way that didn't look in the Q&E backfield anyway. That was a real, real quick, crisp handoff, and Anders was able to get going there uh, right away. So we'll see if... We'll see what kind of game plan they have for Anders out of the shotgun in the run game. Ball in the middle of the field. Three by one, the receivers. Three of the far side. Single receiver near side. Anders side, car left. McKay takes the snap from Case. Starts the roll. No fires over the middle. And it's caught by Barry nice. Rupper for a first down. And he almost runs out of the tackle of Reed, excuse me, of Blake Driscoll. And Wupper is not tackled until he gets to the 26 of McComb. That's a pickup of 26 for the Raiders and a first down and keeps the drive alive. Well, nice play there by both McKay and Welper. The trip set to the left. McKay rolls to his left and then kind of threw backside to Welper, who was one of the slot receivers. Welper was running a post pattern. McKay threw it mostly uh, you know, back against the field there, and Welper made a nice catch in coverage. Ball in the middle of the field. First and 10 QND from the 26-yard line, and the far side linesman is blowing the play dead. They didn't have the chain set. So... The far side linesman blows the play dead so they can get the chains untangled and get them set properly for this first down play. It's first and 10 QD from the Macomb 26 yard line. QD leads 7 0. As Zach Bailey took the opening kick of the game back for a touchdown somewhere in the neighborhood of 75 80 yards. So the Raiders will change the play here, but it looks like they'll stay in the spread offense. Ball about uh, 2 yards inside the near hash mark. Raiders go three by one. Three receivers far side. Jordan Obert, lone receiver near side. Sidecar right, Dylan Anders. Joe McKay takes the snap. Looking far side. Hesitates, now fires, and it's complete oh. to Zach Bailey, and he'll take it to the house for a touchdown. <laughs> and kind of you wonder, because Brady Ginnenbacher started to go up and try and catch that ball, and all of a sudden he just stopped, and I wonder if Bailey said, stop it. Don't yeah. do that. Uh, you're, no, you're exactly right. Gennenbacher on a slant. Uh, Bailey on a, on a short corner route, it looked like. And McKay threw it threw it real sharply, almost like you'd see him throw a slant. I'm not sure what, uh, why Gennenbacher kind of changed his mind there on going to grab that ball. Or maybe it uh, wasn't as close as it looked from up here. But as it stands, ball went right to Bailey, and he went right into the end zone for his second score of the night. And Zach Bailey with the extra point attempt, and it's good. So you said it was 7 nothing, Zach Bailey, a couple <laughs> of minutes ago. Now it's 14 nothing. Zach Bailey and QD leads McComb. Back in 30 seconds, Raider football on WTAD. Bruce, I don't know what it is with Bob's equipment, but it was causing problems with my tape recorder, which was knocking out my mic. Well, Kyle moved the tape recorder all the way in front of him. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Financial Services Representative Michael Libman with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls. I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing in estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls. I'm not exactly sure uh, how it was drawn up or if that was uh, the way Community wanted to happen, but, you know, six points nonetheless, and then Bailey with the extra point to go up 14-0. So, you know, McKay really coming out firing tonight. Offense there certainly looking a lot crisper on that second drive of the ball game than they did when they were in the I formation. So, uh, you know, Q&D doing a nice job there after another stop on downs. Now, can anybody cover a kickoff? That is the next question here. As the Raiders, Zach Bailey took the opening kick for a touchdown, then D.J. Williams-Kelly returned the ensuing kickoff about 75 yards. 
Well, I know this kickoff won't be going to Williams Kelly. That's my, that's my one easy prediction of the day. You should go to Vegas. Yeah. Unfortunately, you can't win the 400 million Powerball. That's already been claimed, but here we go with the kick by Zeke Little, and this time he's just going to try and put it in the end zone, and he does. It's fumbled in the end zone by McCombs' return man, but since he was already in the end zone, it is an automatic touchback, so Zeke Little said enough is enough. Let's just pound it into the end zone and make them bring it to the 20. Yeah, it was uh, number three, Tristan Cohey, on the attempted return, but he was in the end zone. I think if uh, every every time Notre Dame kicks off tonight, I think uh, Coey better go ahead and get ready. I don't think <laughs> William Skelly is going to get another deep one. So here come the Bombers trailing 14 nothing. 5-15 left to go first quarter. McComb lines up in an I formation. No, they're in the spread. Two by two the receivers. Sidecar right is Reed Sprinkle. Tanner Wetzel the quarterback, and he'll just take the snap and go right up the middle of the field and get about a yard. Jimmy Case in on the tackle for QND, and he had help from Logan Schutte. Gain of one for Tanner Wetzel, second and nine. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, if McComb stays in the spread, you're really going to see the QND linebackers key against that run. I think, you know, with a backup quarterback in here, uh, with probably a little bit of uncertainty offensively from the Bombers, they're going to absolutely dare McComb to throw. Eye formation out of the veer now. Wing to the far side is Hunter Minot. Wetzel under center. Fumbled this exchange again, but it looks like McComb was able to jump on top of it. Wetzel was able to recover the fumble. No gain on the play. Maybe the, a loss of the length of a football, so third and virtually ten for McComb. That time they hopped right out of the gun. Maybe they were just trying to see what you know how q &D aligned against that spread, and they went back to the wing T. So another third and long for the Bombers, exactly what q &D wants. Bombers break the huddle, ball in the middle of the field. And they are in the veer offense, the wing tee. Split backs, wing to the far side. And Wetzel will hand it off. No, he kept it, went around the corner and got knocked down for a six-yard loss. Austin Tappy in on the play. Jeffrey Haley was in the neighborhood as well. Jake Ballcamp over there to help out, whoever couldn't get it. Yeah, nice job there by Tappy staying home. That time the Bombers faked a sweep uh, going to their left-hand side. Wetzel kept it, trying to kind of bootleg around the right side. Tappy wasn't fooled, and a big loss for Tappy. Uh, big tackle for loss by Tappy in the Q&D defense. This looks like Hunter Minot back to punt for McComb. And now we have a timeout. Yes, McComb calls timeout with 3.22 left to go in this first quarter. Q&D leading 14-0, first timeout of the game. As head coach Kelly Sears not happy with his McComb special teams right now. I think it's Austin Sparrow back there. Uh, 77? Yeah, I believe okay. so, uh, who also kicked off for the Bombers. So. Sparrow I saw, getting the kicking duties. I saw a seven, but I didn't think Austin Sparrow right. was that short. <laughs> I guess I'm going by the Quincy Sparrow family. 14-0 Q&E leads, 3.22 left to go in this first quarter. This game started with a bang. Q&E, Zach did. Bailey takes the opening kick back for a touchdown of about 75, 80 yards. We'll get the official yardage at halftime. And then D.J. Williams Kelly returned the ensuing kick for McComb about 75 yards just inside the Raider 25. Community held on downs, got the ball back. Actually, yeah, got the ball back, then fumbled on their first two running plays of the game. Mm -hmm. One by uh, Dalen Anders that the Raiders were able to recover. And then Brady Ginnebacher fumbled the next play. McComb recovered, took over on the Raider 30, then had to go for it on fourth down to the Bombers. And Logan Schutte picked off the pass, took it back for a touchdown, but the Raiders called for a block in the back. Brought it back to near midfield, and then the Raiders got a couple of first downs and hit a touchdown pass to Zach Bailey. So after the McComb timeout, Sparrow will punt it away for McComb. Snapback is true but slow, and Austin Tappy darn near blocked the punt. And here's Parker Kinsel with the return. He started his, at the McComb 45. He's at the McComb 30, and he'll be slung forward to the McComb 20-yard line. Parker Kinsel doing a very nice job in Blaine Wilson's punt return position as Wilson usually joins Chapel back to return punts, but with his ACL injury, Blaine Wilson out for the season. Parker Kinsel picks up the slack and returns it about 25 yards, Kyle. Well, nice, nice play there by Kinsel. We talked about him a lot on the kickoff teaming in the uh, Marquette game in week two, and uh, another big hustle play there by Kinsel, doing his best to stay on his feet and putting the Raiders in great field position again. Out of the spread ball in the near hash, they give it to Dalen Anders, who 
got stymied by someone at the line of scrimmage. Terabia ja Jackson, excuse me, Terabia Jackson got an arm on Dalen Anders, and if he doesn't do that, Anders probably takes that to the house, but Anders was able to slip through that tackle and get two yards to bring up second and eight for QND. Yeah, it was a, a real nice job there, and it, it, uh, Sprinkle able to kind of clean up where he left off and uh, put the Raiders here in a, a second and long. Second and eight from the Macomb 18. QND already leads 14-0. Uh, the spread, Anders sidecar right, three to the far side, single receiver near side. McComb blitzes. They throw a slant to Barry Welper, and he lost his footing as he wanted to make a cut. Picked up about seven. It'll be third and short for QND. Inside the McComb 15, it looks like they're going to put Welper down at about the 12. So a gain of seven brings up third and two for QND. Let's see if QND comes back to that play later in the game. That wheel route uh, from the slot receiver looked real open. If McKay may if he uh, chose to give it another second or two to open up. A nice catch is, uh, by Welper as it's dead. Out of the power eye, they give it to Brady Ginnebacher, and he's got the first down, spins off the tackle, and gets it inside the five-yard line. Brady Ginnebacher gets down to about the three of McComb, brings up first and goal for QND, and a pickup of nine for Brady Ginnebacher. Well, good job there by Ginnebacher. Had the first down and kind of got caught up in a pile. You don't see it often from a fullback, but a nice spin move. So right. uh, good footwork there by Ginnenbacher to spin to his left and pick up about another f extra four or five yards. So first and goal, QND from the McComb three-yard line. Actually, it's about the two-and-a-half-yard line, to be precise. Power eye, Ginnenbacher and Kinsel, the up backs. Anders, the deep back. McKay turns, gives it to Anders, and he's hit around the knees, lunges forward to about the one. So a short gain for QND, but it'll be second and goal for the Raiders from the McComb one. I'm guessing Coach Cannell is going to coach over here. I'm, I'm guessing o or, uh, Ginnenbacher is going to get the carry if he's in. There he is on the second down play. Nice effort by Anders, but a nice job up front by the Bombers defensively. Let's see if the Raiders choose to give it to the, the bigger fullback on this one. Second and goal from the McComb one. McKay turns, gives it to Parker Kinsel, and he burrows his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Parker Kinsel gets his first varsity touchdown, and the Raiders lead it 20 to nothing. Well, fitting into the drive was Kinsel on the punt return to set the Raiders up right around, uh, right inside the 20-yard line, and it'll be Kinsel that finishes it off with the touchdown. So a uh, 25-yard scoring drive for QND, and the extra point will be attempted by Cooper Reese as Zach Bailey finally gets a playoff. And Cooper <laughs> Reese bangs the PAT home, so the Raiders lead it 21-0 with a minute 10 left to go. In this first quarter, back in 30 seconds, this is Raider football. On in the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is financial services representative Michael Libman with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls. I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing in estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls. The Raiders kind of sloppy with their first couple of plays. Kyle fumbling both times, but since then, they've really righted the ship and McComb must be a little shell-shocked here, down 21 nothing after only about 10 minutes and 50 seconds of playing time. Yeah, probably so. You know, you, you go back and look at this, uh, how this game kicked off. You know, big tackle uh, on, on Williams Kelly by Hilgenbrink. You know, really, yeah. you know, that was a good chance for, for the Bombers to tie it right back up, steal some of that momentum. Hilgenbrink with some terrific hustle on that, uh, that kickoff play for the Raiders. And, uh, you know, it's preserved, with, you know, it stayed here as a shutout now for the last couple possessions so uh, he gave the Q&D defense a chance to take the field and stop the Bombers and so far Q&D has kept them off the scoreboard. Zeke Little will kick things off for the Raiders. Q&D leading 21-0. Little, Little's kick as a low line drive helicopter shot that will be taken by the return man Crohe. He's trying to go to the far side and a form nice. tackle over on the far side by Barry Welper. That's an instructional video tackle there, Kyle. That sure was. Wrap, Wrap, go ahead, wrap around the knees and put the helmet right in the midsection. Yeah, no, absolutely. Going about full speed, too. He didn't, uh, didn't slow down and just try to grab jersey and hold on to what he could. That was full speed, good contact, great wrapping up. And uh, Welper, we've talked certainly a lot about 
on the offensive side of the ball, making some big plays and catches. That time, really standing out on special teams. So McComb takes over at their own 16. The first and 10 Bombers trailing 21 nothing. Out of the veer, split backs. Tanner Wetzel about to get under his center, Bryce Mappin. Wetzel looks over the Raider defense, takes the snap, and gives it to the second back through, which looks like to be Hunter Minot. It was Hunter Minot, and he got no gain on the play, maybe a gain of about a foot. From the where the uh, ball marker is on the far side, it looks like a gain of about a yard, so it'll be second and nine for McComb. You know, so far, McComb not getting a super heavy dose of Reed Sprinkle uh, right. tonight. I thought it might be a ball game where they handed off the 30, t handed to uh, Sprinkle 30 times and just, you know, give it to your, just keep getting to the best. But so far, through most of this first quarter, that has not been the case. Single back to Sprinkle, trips to the far side. Wetzel turns, gives it to Sprinkle, and he gets form tackled. Jake Volkamp, again, wrapped around the knees and put his helmet in the midsection of Sprinkle, and Sprinkle went nowhere in a hurry. And it's third and long for McComb. And did they give him back the line of scrimmage? They did. That's generous. That was generous. I agree. Sprinkle tonight. Four carries for negative four yards. End of the first quarter. McComb will have third and ten on the first play of the second quarter. But right now, q &E leads McComb 21-0. Raider football on WTAD. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Financial Services Representative Michael Libman with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls. I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing in estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls. Really, and then a one yard touchdown run by Parker Kinsel after Kinsel returned a punt about 20 yards to the McComb 25. So the Raiders, I wouldn't say they're clicking on all cylinders, Kyle, but as close to all cylinders as they can be here so far here in this game. Well, and they're having an awful lot of fun doing it. Certainly a lot more fun than we were having last week. It's good to see them uh, get back here and fly around, and uh, so far, so good here against the Bombers. Tanner Wetzel under his center, and he drops straight back to pass. Looking, fires over the middle. It's off the hands and intercepted by Barry Welper. Welper trying to go all the way around the far corner. Tries to outrun Sprinkle, does. Now starts back the other way, and he slips the tackle and is still alive. Now cuts up the middle of the field and will take it to wow. about the McComb 21-yard line. Barry Welper that time ran about 60 yards to gain <laughs> five, but the Raiders off a deflection by a linebacker had Welper intercept the pass. You know, and he had the right idea both times. He was trying to get to the sideline and just could not quite outrun uh, Sprinkle there to get to the sideline and, and try to take it in the end zone. Then he reversed courses. Really only had one other guy cutting him off from, uh, from getting to the other sideline. So quite the athleticism there from Barry Welper. He doesn't even get off the field. He's going to stay on here on offense. But good hands and uh, good return to set up the Q&D again with the short field. From the McComb 21, first and 10 Raiders out of the eye backfield. Receivers split the both sides. Long count from Jill McKay this time. Turns, pitches it to Dalen Anders. Anders has blockers in front, cuts it to the outside. He's inside the 10, inside the 5. Touchdown, Dalen Anders. 21-yard run by Dalen Anders, and the Raiders on the board 29 seconds into the second quarter, leading 27-0. Well, it looked like a key block from uh, Jordan Chappell from his wide receiver position to help get Anders into the open field. Anders made a couple people miss once he did, and another quick possession from QND, and 15 seconds into the first quarter, they're on the board, and here 29 seconds into the second quarter, they're back on the board. Dale and Anders with the 21-yard touchdown run. Cooper Reese will attempt the extra point. Ball down, and it's blocked. So the Raiders lead it 27-0 with 11.31 left to go in the second quarter. 
I didn't see exactly where the block came from. You, you know, that could, you know, Coach Cannell talked about it in the pregame. Some adjustments that be made on the special teams for Q&D without Blaine Wilson as the snapper. You know, we talked about him as a return man. That time, uh, you know, Q&D possibly missing his presence as a snapper. Uh, so they've had to make some adjustments there, too. So 27 nothing, the Raiders lead it. Tanner Wetzel tonight, the backup quarterback, is Jacob Poor from Macomb, who started all last year as a freshman. Uh, was injured last week against Monmouth Roseville. A shoulder injury. He gutted it out through the end of that game, but was questionable before the game. A game-time decision for McComb, and uh, Bombers figured it was uh, best to rest him and fight another day. And Tanner Wetzel in there, and he's 0 for 3, Kyle, with two interceptions. Yeah, it, you know, and even that one incompletion. I mean, Ginnenbacher uh, yeah, had true. his hands all over, too. So, you know, still probably trying to get the feel of this offense. He's... Uh, He's typically the tight end, does a nice job from his tight end spot and uh, kind of thrown to an uncomfortable, unnatural position maybe a little bit tonight with the injury to poor. And uh, so far, you know, I think Q&D is just, just going to keep, you know, throwing seven, eight guys plus in the box and just daring Wetzel and his bomber offense to throw. It's interesting. Uh, Tanner Wetzel is the backup quarterback, and he's usually the tight end. Reed Sprinkle, who's their bell cow, was a starting offensive lineman last year. Mm -hmm. So... I guess they're athletes up in McComb. They can go from line to backfield, give them about four days to get ready, and they're, they're in there and ready they to go. go. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Zeke Little's kick is high and deep, and D.J. Williams-Kelly has it go through his hands and into the end zone for an automatic touchback. So first and 10 McComb from their own 20-yard line. And much different opponent, Kyle, I realize before I say this statement. But kind of the flip side of last week where Q&E, Always had bad field position. Uh -huh. Helias always had good field position. They didn't need any help the way their offense was running last week. Here tonight, QD's forcing McComb into these long situations, aside from that opening kickoff return by DJ Williams Kelly. Other than that, the Raiders forcing McComb to drive almost the length of the field, and right now their offense just can't handle that. You're right. They forced him out of a four and out, uh, you know, turnover on downs a couple times, a couple picks. So, you know, nothing going yet from a comb offensively to give him any field position. First and 10, and uh, they give it off to a running back, and I'm not quite sure which option, uh, the triple option, kept the ball, but it was the first or second option, and it was, was Sprinkle. It was Sprinkle. That was R just a mass of humanity. I think there was. <laughs> yeah, that was a handoff and then a rugby scrum, basically. <laughs> it was. That was. Probably about 15 or 16 of the 22 players in the field all seemed like they were within uh, three yards of each other. One yard gain for Reed Sprinkle brings up second and nine for McComb from their own 21 yard line. Out of the wing tee, and they'll give it to. No, Wetzel, Wetzel kept, kept it, it, and then he slipped. It was, he, he was making his cut. Austin Tappy there to help out on the tackle. And because Wetzel, Wetzel lost his feet, he got back to the line of scrimmage, basically, and it brings up third and nine. Well, another good job there by Tappy by staying home in his defensive end spot. I think Wetzel thought he had some more room to operate there, kind of uh, looked back to cut back inside. And I don't know if it was the wet grass or just kind of being caught off guard from Tappy uh, being right there, but kind of went right down, and Tappy was able to hop on him for the tackle. Now, Tappy was waiting for him outside, and then Kellen Barnes was crashing down from the uh, defensive line, so Wetzel kind of saw, I think he saw both Raider defenders out of the corner of his eye, and you're right, it might be a little slick out there because of the rain overnight, but Wetzel went down, and the Raiders forced McComb into third and nine, and Wetzel takes the snap, drops straight back to pass, fires deep over the far side, and incomplete, missed his receiver by about 15 yards. Yeah, that time again, you, you probably see a little bit of the inexperience there uh, from the Bombers. That, that time it was just Third and long, ran one post pattern, a couple streak patterns, and just trying to kind of throw it up for grabs. And uh, nothing doing. Raiders coverage at home, and it'll be, again, the Bombers punting from deep in their own territory. So McComb will kick it away from their own 21-yard line. Austin Sparrow will punt it away. QNE leading 27-0, 9.53 left to go first half. Sparrow very deep behind the long snapper, takes it on a hop. And Tappy almost got the block, uh, pump blocked and then ran into the kicker. So whatever Jordan Chapel does on this return will go for naught as Tappy will be called for running into the kicker. Either that or roughing the punter. Let's see which they call. I think that's running into the kicker, which is only a five-yard penalty. Yeah, and he kind of fell, you know, typically they'll just give you running into if he kind of fall at his feet and the punter trips on you, which 
That was my perception of what happened here. Well, my opinion does not count as much as the officials. Which is hard to believe, but... <laughs> You're right. Thank you. Thank you. There should be memorandum put out every, <laughs> every week that Kyle Emberlo is in a stadium that his call matters, but... And it's interesting, Coach Cannell had a chat with Austin Tappy. And it looks like... They declined it. So I guess the decision from Acoma is... Uh, well, I think, there's, I think they're... Did they mark off 15 and only signal the five-yard penalty? I think that's what happened, Kyle. Is yeah, they, they marked off the fifth. They, they signaled the five-yard penalty and then marked off 15. So that gives Q and D, or excuse me, gives McComb a first down at their own 35-yard line. No, I think uh, I don't. I mean, you got Joe McKay. Oh, they did. They did decline it. Yeah. Wow. So the Raiders will take over at their own 35. I, I guess the alternative there for the Bombers is if they accept, they just got to re-kick. Oh, and if yeah, you're the Bombers, yeah. it's like, well, I mean. We're happy we got the last punt away. Yeah, Let's you just got, go. Right, you got the punt away. You know, uh, the chances of them booming one sixty yards downfield are pretty slim, I suppose. So they just said, it's probably about as good as it's going to get. Let's let's just get out there and play D. The uh, head referee went over to talk to McCombs coaches, and now it's back in the center of the field, and we'll get this thing going. So you're right, Kyle. McComb declined the penalty because they got the punt off cleanly. It was only about a. 25-yard punt, and Chapel took it back 10 more yards. So the Raiders take over first and 10 on the McComb 35-yard line. Out of the spread, McKay takes the snap. Looking, fires the out pattern, and it's complete to Brady Ginnebacher. Ginnebacher has one man to beat. He does so, and Brady Ginnebacher will take it to the house. And Jordan nice Chapel way late a young man for McComb. Nice job again by Chapel. He was running a post pattern. Uh, McKay hits Ginnebacher in about a, a five- or six-yard hitch pattern, turns it upfield, gets a big block, Again from Chapel, so Chapel springs uh, another teammate loose for a big touchdown, and this time it's Ginnebacher on the board for QND. Let's see if the Raiders go ahead and kick it or go for two. Looks like they will kick it, but another big play from Ginnebacher. We saw him with a big touchdown catch against Marquette. Does it again against the Bombers. Snapback ball down. Cooper Reese's kick is up, and it looks good, and it is. So the Raiders lead it with 9.27 left to go in the second quarter. 34-0 Raiders. Lead McComb back in 30 seconds. Raider football on WTNA. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is financial services representative Michael Libman with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls. I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing in estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls. Hasn't been enough. Hasn't been enough long drives for us to. Yeah, we're that's true. It, we're getting it mixed up. So, either way, the Raiders are scoring all over the place. And uh, <laughs> you know, 15 minutes into this game, it put up five touchdowns. 34 nothing. QND leads McCall, and uh, Zeke Little will get this game restarted here in just a moment. Parker Kinsel in the middle of the field. We should put an ISO cam on Parker Kinsel to see what kind of carnage <laughs> the, it leads to. <laughs> the Kinsel cam. I'd love it. Here's Little's kick. It's deep down the middle of the field. And it looks like Lucas Van Atten has it for McComb. He makes a cut, and he runs right into a blue mob down there in the middle of the field at about the 20-yard line. It was Lucas Van Atten, I think. Trey Augusta, I'm sorry, Trey Augusta with the return for McComb. So it'll be first and 10 at McComb, and once again, they'll start near their own 20-yard line. They spotted at the McComb 21. With q &E leading 34 nothing. Well, other than the Williams-Kelly return, there's nothing going here for McComb in terms of making big plays. The Raiders have been able to keep it away from him on the return game. And McComb just hasn't been able to hardly get outside their own 25. 
First and ten for McComb, and they will throw the ball. Wetzel looking for a wheel route. It's not there, so he fires to the outside receiver incomplete. Trying to hit Bryce Weston that time, and I think he really wanted to go with the wheel route to the running back or the wing back coming out on the near sideline, and Wetzel just couldn't find him and tried his secondary receiver and threw it incomplete. Yeah, I think he wanted Minot in the flat as well. It looked like Ginnenbacher uh, had his hands on Minot, slowing him down. Chapel and Welper combined for coverage downfield and not really any good options for what's on that one. So it is second and 10 for McComb from their own 21-yard line. Trailing 34-0 are the Bombers. Ball in the middle of the field. And it looks like they will have the wing tee or the veer, if you will. Wetzel under his center. Maffin. Maffin, excuse me. They pitch it wide. And it's a good run for the Bombers and then a good hit at the end of it. Brady, or excuse me, Jordan Chapel again lowered his shoulder and took down the McComb ball carry, and for the life of me, I can't read his number from here. Was that, uh, it was Blake it was Driscoll. Wilson. It was eight. Okay. It was Blake Driscoll who has only carried it once before tonight, but once before that carry, and he picked up seven there. He picked up four on his previous carry. He's the leading offensive machine for McComb here with 11 yards. Well. He brings up a third and about two, two and a half for McComb. And another nice tackle there from Chapel. We've mentioned his name a couple times now on, on some big hits. That time it was, uh, you know, several yards downfield. But Chapel, nonetheless, with a nice form tackle on Driscoll to force the third down play. Third and about a yard and a half for McComb from their own 30-yard line. Out of the veer. They turn. They give it to the running back. And it's a swarming mob that will take the McComb player down. The ball came loose. But the officials ruled the ball carrier down for McComb. And that was... Blake Driscoll, and he was tackled for about a two-yard loss, so the Raiders force another three and out for McComb. A two-yard loss, as it turns out, for Blake Driscoll, and it will be fourth and about four for McComb, and it looks like they're going to punt this ball away. And it looks like Haley, Jeff Haley getting off the bottom of that pile for Q&D, so getting some uh, tackles for loss, a TFL, as the D-linemen try to rack those up, and good job by Haley to force the punt for the Bombers. Here's Sparrow's kick. It's a line drive end over end kick. The Chapel takes at his own 46. Starts one way, now cuts to the middle of the field, gets taken down just inside midfield. So the Raiders will start this drive at the McComb 49. Kewanee leads 34 0 with 728 left to go in this first half. And this will be one of the longer drives of the night for the Raiders. If they can score here, this will be a 49 yard drive. Chapel, it looked like he had the wall set up to the right. Must have not thought he could get out there and that the uh, pursuit for the Bombers wouldn't allow him to turn the corner there. But you're right. I mean, this is uh, this looks like they're my way from the end zone, and they're inside half field, midfield. Out of the power eye, first and 10 Q&D from the Macomb 49. Raiders lead it 34-0. Quick count, give it to Dalen Anders. He starts one way, then kicks it outside. He's got 10. He's got 15, and he turns the corner and takes it to the house. 48-yard touchdown run for Dalen Anders, his second touchdown of the game. And the Raiders with another one-play scoring drive. But, oh, there's some laundry in the middle of the field. And they're bringing this one back. Yeah, and I'm not sure. What, I, I guess a hold here. Okay. Blocking the back again Blocking against back. QND. And the flag is laying at about the line of scrimmage. No, no, I take that back. It's laying just past the first down marker. So it looked like Anders picked up about 12. And then with the penalty, they'll mark it off, and it'll be, say, first and 13, something like that. So the Raiders Actually, first and eight. Yeah. I apologize. I need to do my math on the run better. Well, the Raiders, you know, 34-0, and have had actually two touchdowns now taken off the board. So lots of big plays. Logan Schutte with the interception turn earlier taken off the board. Raiders went down and scored nonetheless. This time Anders with about a 48-yard uh, touchdown run removed because of a penalty as well. So it's actually first and nine here for Q&D from the McComb 47-yard line. Kinsel goes in motion out of the power eye. Turns up field before the, yeah. and they just now threw the flag. Anders once again with a good run, but this is coming back because Parker Kinsel turned up field before the ball was snapped. So this will be a five-yard penalty on Q&D and bring up first and 14 from the Q&D side of the field. I think the Bombers may even have their choice of penalties here. You're right about Ken. So when you go in motion, uh, you know, he's going horizontally. He cannot turn his shoulders up field before the ball snap. Yeah, you're right. There Kensel was illegal motion, and there was also a hold on Q&A. Okay. So. 
They're talking it over with McCombs captains to see which penalty they want to enforce. Like, that's a tough decision. It's Q&D going to this uh, power back set here and two penalties in a row. See if they stick with it or if they try to mix it up. I think the illegal motion penalty is from the line of scrimmage and the hold was downfield. So McComb will actually take the illegal motion penalty. I think it's a wash, though, because that's a five-yard walk-off from the line of scrimmage, and the holding penalty, which is double the length of the illegal motion penalty, would have taken the ball to about the same position. Mm -hmm. And from the way the white hat is telling Coach Cannell, he's saying that a Q&D player tackled a McComb player for the holding penalty. So as I mentioned, it'll be first and about 14 or 15 for Q&D. The ball at the Raider 46, and the Raiders go spread. Three to the near side. Sidecar left to Anders. McKay takes the snap. Gets a block from Anders. Fires it deep down the far sideline for Welper, and it's off his hands incomplete. Welper and Driscoll really having a hand fight contest down that far sideline, but Welper broke free at the last second and just couldn't hang on to the ball. Pass falls incomplete. Well, I like the Raiders' strategy. There. They go trips left, trying to get some single coverage on Barry Welper. Got exactly what they wanted. Welper was open downfield. A nice ball. Uh, from Joe McKay that time with a, you know kind of hand-to-hand -hand combat there a little bit uh, Welper unable to uh, to, re to rein it in hand-to-hand -hand combat but I'm glad there was no penalty called on that either way because that's just kids you know yep, going, going, for, going for the ball trips to the near side single receiver far side out of the spread on second and 15 McKay takes the snap they're setting up a middle screen to Anders and he gets the pass Sprinkle is hunting him down and he's able to knock Anders down at about midfield the Raiders did a good job of blocking, but Sprinkle from his linebacker position really did a good job of ball hawking and bringing Anders down as nobody got a hat on Sprinkle, but he came from about 20 yards away, so none of the Raider linemen could find him. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Sprinkle kind of showing off the instincts there from the linebacker spot. Did a good job of closing once he recognized it for screen. It's one of those plays, and the Raiders watch that on Monday. They'll probably kick themselves a little bit because that was a lot of green there for one of their quickest players in Anders, and Sprinkle kind of came out of nowhere running past a couple blockers and uh, cost him a big play. Third and 10 for QND, actually third and 11 from the midfield stripe. McKay rolls out, stops, fires over the middle, it's through the hands of Chapel incomplete. So the Raiders on that set of four, three downs had the ball go through receiver's hands twice, and the Raiders have fourth and about 11 from midfield, and they will punt it away. Yeah, so, so the Raiders not... Uh Unable to get that uh, next touchdown on the board. A couple penalties, a couple drop passes, and a screen pass that, uh, you know, they might have left on the table. That could have been a big one. But as it stands, a stop for the Bombers in part to uh, thanks to that nice tackle by S Sprinkle on second down. 6.03 left to go. First half, QD leads 34 0. Snap back to Zeke Little is true, and he bangs the punt away. And a fair catch called by Driscoll, and he'll just let it bounce, let it bounce, and it crawls into the end zone for a touchback. Officially, what, about a 48-yard punt for sure. Zeke Little, but that was a nice high spiral that carried inside the five-yard line, and Driscoll did a good job to go up for the fair catch signal and then kind of get the Raiders to slow down, and then the ball hit and barely crawled into the end zone. Yeah, for anyone that... Uh Takes it easy tomorrow and watches some college football on their couch. You'll see it. That, that's what the punts look like on TV. That was a uh, big, big, high, beautiful spiraling punt. First and 10 McComb, and again, they start a drive from their own 20-yard line. Bombers come out in the veer. Wing back to the near side. Tanner Wetzel, the quarterback. Goes with a head bop, which should have been called for a penalty, but they hand it off, and here comes uh, Blake Driscoll, and he'll get about seven yards, close to eight yards, seven-yard carry for Driscoll, and that is their longest, second longest play from scrimmage in the game. Two seven-yard carries for Blake Driscoll. Yeah, you know, probably catching the Raiders off guard here a little bit. And, you know, I, I certainly when, you know, just like any team, when, uh, you know, the rushing game is really dominated by one guy, Coach Cannell does, typically does a, the Raiders do typically a real good job of zeroing in on that one player. Well, tonight it's Sprinkle, but Driscoll kind of gets some carries uh, and Sprinkle's, you know, with Sprinkle not doing it. Here's a fake by Wetzel and, didn't make connections with the running back on the fake, so he had to keep it himself. And he maybe got back to the line of scrimmage, though I think he's just short. And it's going to bring up third and about a, uh, third and about three for the Bombers. I'm not sure. It, 
Not sure exactly what they drew up there, but Welch is trying to make the most of it. Third and three here for the Bombers. If they can pick up this first down, they might be able to keep their, the ball away from Q&D for most the remainder of the half. I know Raiders would like to try to get this back and try to uh, get 40 points on the board before halftime. Here's Wetzel with the veer. Wing back to the near side. That's Minot. Wetzel under his center. He'll pitch it wide. And Driscoll's knocked off his feet. Wow. As getting good penetration that time for the Raiders was who, Kyle? I'm trying to catch the number myself. I think that was There's Justin Wolf, Wolf Martin. Martin. I think. There it is, 56. So nice job by Wolf Martin. Six foot, 210 pound senior just driving his blocker into the backfield and forcing, uh, and forcing the fourth down. So third and short turns into a fourth and about five or six. So McComb forced to punt it away with four minutes to go in this second quarter. Here's the punt by Sparrow. Chapel will take it right at midfield. And the return left is on if Chapel can get there. And he does get the corner turn. He's at the 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. Waits for his blocks. Steps through a tackle and will dive into the end zone for the touchdown. Nice play there by Jordan Chaplin. A big play from the q &E special teams. Really took his time there. Took a chance to try to get all the way to the wall on the left-hand side along the Raiders' sideline. Got there, got some big blocks along the way. And Chapel, who we've noted earlier, had some big blocks to spring his teammates loose for some touchdowns. This time breaks a tackle around the five and dives in for a touchdown to put the Raiders up 40-0. to zero with three minutes and 39 seconds left before halftime. What a homestand we've had here. q &E leads Alt Marquette at the half 35-0. q &E trails Elias last week at the half 42-0. And if Zeke Little can make this extra point, it'll be 41-0 q and Snap back ball down, kick is up. That's a line, that was a goal kick. Yeah, get out of the way. That Zeke was going Little, hard. bang that one home. That was a <laughs> line drive. And the Raiders have used three different kickers tonight to get point afters, but the Raiders lead it 41-0 with 3.39 left to go here in this first half. We'll take a 30-second break. Raider football on WTA Day. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Financial Services Representative Michael Libman with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls. I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing in estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls. Needs McComb at the second quarter. I started to say at the half. I talked about it so much. I started to use that phrase. Tim Kittrup with Kyle Vemberlo, Bruce Tierstegi, our producer. 3.39 left to go in the second quarter. 41 nothing. Raiders lead it. And uh, I think Coach Kelly Sears, I don't think he would admit it to anybody, but just from reading the preview article in the McComb paper today, he kind of forecast a long night tonight for his squad. And they had a lot of youngsters getting some varsity experience, and it's showing up here tonight, Kyle. Yeah, you're right. You know, a real senior-laden team last year for the Bombers and uh, took them to nine victories and uh, a lot of good memories for Bomber fans. But, you know, it, Coach Sears has talked about, you know, numbers being down a little bit uh, this year for the Bombers football program. So, you know, some younger guys getting some starts. We've seen, um, you know, you know, possibly lack of depth, you know, some of these guys mm -hmm. getting injured and then and having to do a lot of shuffling around. So, um, you know, probably a little different, different uh different type of coaching job he has this year than he did last year and you know certainly tonight not catching a ton of breaks it's not making his life easier who's kicking off now for the Raiders it's a little it's Zeke Little yeah. who will kick off again 41 nothing Q&E &E leads with 339 left to go second quarter and the kick by Little is high and short will fall into some open space in the far sideline and go out of bounds so McComb will have their best starting field position in quite a while, Kyle, as they'll take over at their own 35. Yeah, at that time, uh, I don't know if we're just trying to keep it away from Williams Kelly, which is a, a worthy endeavor, but Little with a big leg just pushed that one a little bit to the right. So Bombers get a little bit of breathing room. I don't know if we'll see any different um, play calling from them. They'll try to put in the air more than they otherwise would. 41-0 Q&E leads. And a wide receiver late in reporting for the Bombers. And 
We will get back underway after that kick goes out of bounds. So first and 10 McComb from their own 35-yard line, ball in the middle of the field. Tanner Wetzel subbing for the injured Jacob Poor. That quarterback for McComb. Under his center, Bryce Mappin. Veer with the wing back near side. Wetzel will turn. He'll give it to the second back through. That's Driscoll. He'll get five. He'll get seven yards. That's the third time tonight Driscoll's picked up seven yards, and that's their farthest play from scrimmage, those three carries of seven yards. Yeah, that time Driscoll almost on a type of cross buck play. Again, I think it's uh, Q and D just... You know, linebackers talked all week about trying to follow Sprinkle, and, you know, Sprinkle's probably the guy that's going to take it to the ball. Well, you know, so maybe a couple misdirection plays here working, going the other way for Driscoll. Second and three for McComb from their own 42-yard line, trailing 41-0. 3.03 left to go in this first half. Wetzel under his center. Different wing back to the near side. And they will turn, and they'll give it to Sprinkle again, or excuse me, to Driscoll again, and he'll take it to midfield for a gain of eight. Hey, their longest play from scrimmage, an eight-yard gain for Blake Driscoll, and it's the first down for McComb. Yep. Which I believe is... It's their second first down. Second first down. I, th I was going to say, I believe it's their second first down. Uh, so nice job there by Driscoll. He's the man of the hour here for the Bombers. Not much going offensively, but, but Driscoll getting some nice carries off tackle, and giving the Bombers a little bit of breathing room now to midfield. Lots of whistles blowing, and I'm sure, oh, it's a timeout called by McComb. That's their second timeout. We'll keep it right here. Community leads 41-0. Bombers call their second timeout of the first half. They have the ball right at midfield, actually just inside their half of the mid midfield stripe. If you're joining us late, Community leads 41-0. Zach Bailey. Returned the opening kickoff for a touchdown, 75, 80 yards or so. Then Bailey took in a 26-yard touchdown pass from Joe McKay. And then Parker Kinsel culminated a drive after he had a 20-yard punt return. A one-yard plunge by Kinsel. All the PATs were good. First two by Bailey. The third by Reese. 21-0 CUNY lead led at the end of the first quarter. Dale and Anders, a 21-yard touchdown run. The point after was blocked. Brady Ginnebacher, a 35-yard pass from Joe McKay. Point after good by Cooper Reese. And then Jordan Chappell with a 50-yard punt return for a touchdown. And Zeke Little had the extra point for q &E to make it 41-0. So the Raiders, Kyle, on at least two punts, have had 75 yards in return yardage. Well, it's uh, certainly a lot of big plays through the air on special teams here tonight for q &E. We did talk to Coach Day for a minute in the pregame, and one of the challenges he had was challenge his defense to try to get a touchdown tonight. And uh, certainly given the Raiders lots of short fields, so on first and 10 for McComb, they will keep it to in Wetzel's hands. And he'll turn the corner and get about six or seven. Austin Tappy with the tackle. And it looks like uh, McComb's found some success here going off the, either the right tackle or the guard tackle slot. As they've picked up seven, eight, now seven on three plays. Certainly have some size along the right hand, uh, the right hand size there, right hand side of, of their offensive line. We do not have heights and weights, unfortunately, for the Bombers, but Jackson, who we talked about earlier tonight, uh, kind of anchors that right, uh, right tackle spot for him. Second and a short three for McComb. They give it to Reed Sprinkle. He bounces off a tackle, but then gets stuck by Jordan Chappell, who brought his big boy shoulder pads here tonight. <laughs> he did. He's, he's had about, what, four resounding hits, either blocks or tackles here tonight. Yeah, I mean, big frame, Chappell, but, you know, 6-3, listed at 6'3", 185. You don't expect him to be putting as many people on their backs as he has tonight, but that's the second or third time he's... He's really had the pads ringing, and we talked about him uh, opening up some touchdowns earlier for Q&D that time again, doing it defensively. Gain of two brings up third and one for McComb from the Raider 42-yard line, we'll call it. Wetzel takes his time getting underneath center. Now quarterback sneak, and, oh, I think with a late extra effort lunge, Wetzel was able to get the first down. He's very close to it based on where the far side linesman is. Yeah, it almost depends I, on who's got the spot here. The near side yeah. linemen's, I think he's short. They're going to have to measure, I would say, either way. Oh, they're saying fourth down. If I were McComb's coaching staff, I'd stop the clock and have this measured. But they're not doing it. They're saying fourth down all the way, but it's fourth and about what? Half the football. Well, they're taking you know, a long time to get this playing. You, you, to your point about getting a measurement, you think they'd want to kind of hurry this up and give them this is by far their best chance to score. Well, they waited about 16 seconds, and then they, well, no, they just I'm called timeout. Time Am I wrong, or the offense can request? 
a measurement, which stops the clock, correct? Uh, yeah, I thought. It's, okay, it's an official timeout. They are requesting a measurement. That makes more sense. I mean, Kelly Sears is no idiot. He, he's been coaching 18 years. He knows you can ask for a measurement and not get a timeout charge to you. Well, and, you know, I don't know if he's going to push back at the officials at all. You know, to your point, there was probably about a minute 10 when Wetzel was tackled, you, you know. Yeah, it was about a minute 11 when know, he was they're tackled. Not any, they're not any closer or further to a first down than since Wetzel got tackled, but they, uh, at 55 seconds, decided to go ahead and get, out, get a measurement out. It's about, what, three or four inches is all McComb needs. They were short, but they basically need about half a football to get the first down here. But, yeah, yeah, they waited 16 seconds. And then finally somebody said, well, let's measure. So here we go. They have the change reset over on the far side, and it's fourth and inches for McComb, trailing 41-0 here to QND. 55 seconds left in this first half. McComb, McComb going for it here on fourth and inches. Wetzel under his center, mapping. And the right side of the line blew off the line of scrimmage for McComb. So the right side of the line thought it was on first sound, and the center said, I don't know what you guys were thinking about because I never snapped the ball. So now fourth and inches becomes fourth and five and some inches. Yeah, and I was wondering if they were going to try to go a quarterback sneak to Wetzel or off tackle to Driscoll. Well, the quarterback sneaks out the window now, and a, you know, fourth and five plus. Well, I can remember Kyle Vimberlo bursting through the line for longer than five yards on a quarterback sneak. <laughs> well, that was your best running play in your career, basically. That was about my only running play. <laughs> so it's fourth and about five and a half yards for McComb here. Back to the Raider 46-yard line. Wetzel under his center map and out of the wing. Matzo, uh, Wetzel turns, gives it to the halfback, and he's swallowed up for a loss of a yard. There were three Raiders there. Jeffrey Haley was in on the play. Brady Ginnenbacher in on the play. Logan Schutte helps up the ball carrier. Blake yeah. Driscoll. Walker Smith in on that one. I mean, that was just take your pick from anyone in the front, uh, front four, front seven for Q&D. No chance for Sprinkle on that one. And I'd be real surprised if the Raiders try and do much with this play here, Kyle. I mean, already up 41-0 Q&D. And now the Raiders call timeout. I know we've talked in the past about, you know, this is live bullet situation, game situation. You can work on a lot of things, but you're, you're playing a team, you're clearly going to win 41 nothing. I, I'm not sure I'd come out and really work too much on this two-minute drill, but from, from the body language of the Q&E sideline, that's exactly what they're going to do after this timeout. Yeah, I think they are. I think they even uh, grabbed some different wristbands and, uh, you know, are, are going to use the opportunity. You, you alluded to it. Probably not, uh, certainly not a live or dead situation to, that you can score here, but q and going to use the opportunity to get some two-minute drill practice in with the thought process that... Uh, there will come a point later this season where they do need a point uh, with 30 seconds left before halftime. So trying to use every second to their advantage here and get it most out of they can of uh, the last 35 seconds of this half. 41 nothing. CUNY leads. McComb will get the ball to start the second half. McComb won the toss before the game and elected to defer, and then Zach Bailey took the opening kickback for a touchdown. So things started going downhill once they deferred. That's <laughs> true. Talking about McComb. Lesson is, folks, don't kick the Zach Bailey. He just got, well, uh, got the Raiders rolling. Don't kick the Zach Bailey, but then the Raiders learned that D.J. Williams-Kelly can be a threat in the return game, as on the ensuing kickoff. Williams-Kelly took it about 75 yards, and only the hustle of Blake Hildenbrink prevented back-to-back -back kickoff return touchdowns to start this game. After the timeout, the Raiders throw a swing pass to Barry Welper, and he's inside the... Uh, 50-yard line down inside the 45 and wrestled out of bounds on the far side, which will stop the clock. Gain of about six for Barry Welper. That looked like a forward pass, didn't it, Kyle? Yeah, Not by so. much, but it was. No, sure. It, it was a nice catch by Welper. Again, the lead block that time. Chapel from, the slot, uh, from his slot position. Doing a good job letting Welper turn inside. You know, and even watching McComb in that play, I, I think they're even kind of relishing the two-minute drill opportunity. That was... Seemed like well, by far one of their more aggressive defensive plays tonight. I think if I were down 41 nothing like McComb is, and the other team came out in the spread with 35 seconds left and a half, you're leading by 40, I might get a little ticked off that they're going to throw the ball, so I'll be a little extra aggressive on defense. Well, and that's fine, but, you know, it, it could have used some of the aggression uh, before as the 41 points well, were yeah, racked up. yeah, that, sure. 
I don't mean to, you know, poke at you know, a bomber team that's, uh, you know, always played hard and played classy through the years. Just obviously taking on the chin a little bit here tonight in this first half. Kewanee called their second time out, which they didn't really have to do, Kyle, because the player was tackled out of bounds. In this case, Barry Welper. Did he? Okay, did he get out of bounds? Okay. He was out of bounds. They were already stopping the clock oh. unless the Raiders were yelling timeout before Welper even hit the ground, so the official stopped the clock immediately anyway. But back to action here after the timeout. Three by one, the receivers. Three of the near side. Out of the spread, the ball at the bomber, 46-yard line on second and about four. McKay takes the snap under some pressure, fires the deep out, has Welper out there who comes back and makes the catch inside the 20 and then just steps out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Back shoulder high throw, and Welper was looking at the ball, and I think that was Blake Driscoll in coverage. He never turned around to find the ball, and the Raiders pick up about 31 yards on that throw down to the 15-yard line. Well, they, that time again, they went to trips on the left-hand side, single uh, coverage on the, uh, on the uh, single side there just to Welper. McKay doing a nice job having a lot of confidence in Welper to make a play there. Left it short. So Welper turned around, made the catch, and uh, another big connection from McKay to Welper. Three by one, the receivers. Three of the near side. Ball in the far hash. On first down, McKay takes a snap. Pump fake. Fires a slant, and it's incomplete off the hands of Chapel. Sprinkle and coverage for McComb. 14 seconds left in this first half. It'll be second and 10. Q&D from the McComb 15. Raiders lead it 41-0. I like that play call, especially in the two-minute drill. That time... Uh, you know, they send Welper on kind of on the swing there, which we see him throw that a lot. They try to hit Chapel going the other way on the slant pattern. It's a real quick hitter play, and, you know, if it goes incomplete, in this instance, it only takes four seconds off the clock. Three receivers to the near side, single receiver far side, and single coverage. And I think they didn't call a false start on Q&E, but I'm not sure who it was. I didn't see it either. You know what that almost looked like, Kyle? The old Palmyra play. Oh, the... the the referee showing the q &E sideline that somebody on the line adjusted their hand. Really? I think that's what that signal meant. But a five-yard penalty on q &E makes it first and 15 for the Raiders from the McComb 20-yard line. 14 seconds left in the half. McKay takes the snap. Fires and hits nice Welper catch. for a touchdown. Hands catch in front of the defensive back. Welper went up, grabbed the ball. Kind of took a stride and fell into the end zone for the touchdown that makes it 47-0. Yeah, slant pattern, maybe a skinny pose type pattern there from Welper. Ball thrown just a little bit behind him, threw his hands back, threw his hips back to catch that ball and fell into the end zone. So a nice snag there from Welper and Q&E running the two-minute drill. Scores just before halftime. Zeke Little will attempt the extra point. Snap back ball down, the kick is up, and it's good. 48-0, Q&D leads it at essentially halftime here with five seconds left to go in this second quarter. Q&D does take advantage of that hold on fourth down to go basically uh, 53, 54 yards for mm -hmm. the touchdown. Well, again, you know, did, did Q&D have to go for, the uh, you know, this two-minute drive or this 35-second drive? Uh, probably not. Probably game was obviously probably uh, in pretty good shape without it, but yep. you know, doing a good job of uh, you know getting the most of what they can tonight. And that time, you know, in that instance, it was trying to get some two-minute drill type practice in. So um, you know, they've done it. Uh, they've done it a bunch, you know, and then made it look good again tonight. Welper, you know, kind of picking off where he left off last year against the Bombers. Had a big touchdown catch in the fourth quarter, probably you know some 60 plus yards to get the Raiders within a couple points. I, uh, I remember what you're talking about, but I don't remember the length. I have that in my bag. 48-0 Q&E leads with five seconds left to go in the first half. So running clock the whole second half. And Kyle, you think about it, Joe McKay played the first half and the first series of the second half against Dalton Marquette, then sat. Last week played the first half against Elias. Raiders trailing 42 nothing. McKay didn't play the second half. Here tonight, I would find it hard to believe Joe McKay will be out there for the second half. I don't think so. Uh, you know, it, it'll be three straight games. Your point where these starters will not have played uh, even three quarters, let alone four. Right. You know, four quarters. So, I'll, I think that'll definitely change next week as the uh, the Raiders have a big game and uh, up north in Carthage. So, you know, they'll probably have to work a bit on conditioning here. I'm sure they have been the last couple of weeks. Bounding kick that's taken by Lucas Van Atten. He's going to try and go from the far side or the near side all the way to the far side, and he'll be tackled at about the 31-yard line as the clock winds to zeros. 
we played 24 minutes here at q and &E Field. The Raiders lead Macomb 48-0 at half. Back in two minutes. This is Raider football on WTAD. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Financial Services Representative Michael Libman with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls. I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing in estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls. For the second half kickoff, q &E leading McComb 48-0. Tim Kintrup with Kyle Beverlo. Bruce Terstegi, our producer on this Friday evening. Looks like some changes being taking place for the kickoff cover team for q &E. Looks like a couple players have stepped out and a couple players have gone in. Zeke Little will get things restarted here for the Raiders. And the Raiders will kick it off. And McComb will be moving from left to right. Same direction they were going at the end of the first half. 48 0, the Raiders lead it. And this will be the second and third stringers, I would imagine, for QND the rest of this game. Yeah, should, uh, you know, from what I can tell, I think it's a pretty injury free night for the Raiders. It's yeah. always a good sign heading into a uh, kind of a newfound rivalry game. Uh, next week against the Line I West. It's not often you can call a team a rival when you've played them one time in the past several decades, <laughs> but I think it applies here against the Line I West. Here we go with the kick, and Zeke Little boots it high, a little bit short, and it's taken by Re McCombs' return man at about the nine-yard line, and he comes to almost a complete stop over on the far sideline, and it's tackled at about the 22-yard line, and he was so far away, I didn't pick up a number. Did you, Kyle? Uh, I didn't... Uh, I did not catch the number. I'm trying to keep an eye here on the... I think it was uh, Tristan Crowhey. That makes sense. He, he was back there earlier with... Uh, back there earlier in the game, and I think he got the call there, too. Taking over the 20-yard line, nonetheless. The first and 10 bombers from their own 20 with the running clock. Driscoll in at wing back now. Tanner Wetzel still the quarterback for McCall. Wetzel turns, and... Gave it to the first man through who didn't get very far. Gain of about a yard. And that was number 22 for the Bombers, who is Trey Augusta. Well, I think with the, uh, I think we'll see, the, obviously, with the running clock here. Try to get these snaps off pretty quick and get some of these guys some good reps here for Q&D. Blake Hildenbrink still kind of anchoring the uh, defense for Q&D. Austin Tappy still in there. LB Cornwell so, in at corner. Yeah, a couple of regulars in there for QND, but on second and nine for the Bombers from their own 21. They see Augusta have it, tries to bring it around the corner. He's tackled for about a two yard gain. Austin Tappy in on that tackle. Cornwell was in the neighborhood as well. And also for QND on the tackle was. Oh, I got to get the full roster out. Yeah, I apologize. That was number 27. I was hoping you had a different one than I did. That's uh, Nordy. Okay. I forget his first name. I'm still trying, okay, I'm trying to find Trey Augusta on my stat sheet. This stat sheet's going to be ugly in the next five minutes. <laughs> well, I'm, glad it's, I'm glad you're having to do that. I just. Third and about eight for McComb. We'll call it a, actually seven. Third and seven for the Bombers. And Wetzel with a delay, and it's bottled up right oh. at the line of scrimmage. That was a draw play that never got drawn. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think Walker Smith. <laughs> He had that snuffed out before the handoff took place, and you get big Walker Smith's arms around you, you're going to go down pretty quick. That's what happened there. 
whoever that was with the ball from McComb took the handoff and was engulfed by three Raiders, so I never saw who touched it. I think it was Sprinkle. It almost looked was like it, it was a Statue of Liberty play. Yeah. Walker Smith just almost swallowed him. So a loss of three means McComb will punt it away, fourth and ten, and Tanner Wetzel came off the field, but now has to be back in there to call the signals for this punt by Austin Sparrow. 48-0, q and leads. McComb goes three and out on their first possession. The right guard raised his head. Let's see if they caught that. Well, I'm not sure if the q yes, jumped did. forehand. Okay. The right guard lifted his head. Right. And then the uh, q and player came across the line of scrimmage, but the officials were paying attention. Five-yard penalty brings it up fourth and 15 for McComb from their own 15-yard line. So Austin Sparrow will try and punt this one away yet again for the Bombers. And who's back to return? Looks like Parker Kinsel to the far side. Krasinski, Carson Krasinski, 175-pound junior, number two, also back with Kinsel. Punt is away, and Kinsel has it. He will be wrapped up and brought down at about the 35-yard line. Tyler Arnold with mm -hmm. the tackle for McComb. One of the starting guards for the Bombers. Nice uh, tackle there by Arnold. Head in full speed, didn't really get a chance to slow down. Did a nice job wrapping Kinsel up for a very short gain. So it's first and 10 Raiders from the McComb 35-yard line. And I would think Max Bemberlow is in the game, is he not? He is. At quarterback for q and &A. You know, new quarterback, new personnel, but kind of the same story here for q and offensively, taking over again on the short field. First and 10 from the McComb 35. Full house backfield. They give it to Dalen Anders, and he'll be wrapped up for a gain of one. Reed Sprinkle in on the tackle for McComb. Parker Kensel in the backfield. Luke Frieden in there. You mentioned Max Benberlow. Looks like Logan Schutte in the game at tight end. Second and nine after the one yard gain for Dalen Anders. Ball at the McComb 34-yard line. Anders with 45 yards rushing tonight. They run the counter play, give it to Anders, and McComb stuffed that play, and Anders gets back to the original line of scrimmage for this set of downs, so a loss of one brings up third and 10 for QND. That time on the, the counter play to the right-hand side there, the left guard and left tackle pull for the Raiders, and key to that play is that the right side of the line of scrimmage, you know, it get, does a nice job getting off the ball so it doesn't slow them down, but the time the, the linemen that pull for Q&D just kind of had folks in their way. There was a pile. Could never get to their blocking assignments. So third and 10 for Q&D from the Macomb. 35-yard line. Q&D leads 48-0. That was an awkward snap, but Bemberlow rolls out with it. He'll keep it around the far side, and he'll be pushed out of bounds after a gain of about two. There was a delay after that snap yeah. because Max Bemberlow thought it was illegal motion, but the officials let it go, and Bemberlow went, oh, okay, and carried out the play in game two on a scramble. I'm not sure the snap was didn't come early. It almost looked like okay. the snap came and everyone moved a you know, half second later. But Max Venro looking downfield, trying to get a pass, trying to get this first down, and nothing going on downfield. Tried to turn it upfield and uh, not much doing. So Zeke Little will punt it away for QND. Three and out for the Raider. Second string offense. Little had one punt that carried into the end zone, and this one he pooches, another nice little spiral. Brady Ginnenbacher on the hustle, but again, it goes into the end zone for a touchback. So Little's punted twice for about 80 yards and two touchbacks on the evening. q &E leading 48-0 here, and we've played about half of this uh, third quarter with the running clock. I think uh, hopefully Zeke Little saving those nice bounces on the punts for next week, you know, to see if we can pin the Chargers inside the 5 or 10 a couple times. He's had a couple of real nice punts tonight. He just didn't get the bounce inside the 10 that he was looking for. So the Raiders leading 48-0. See McComb take over. First and 10 at their own 20. Tanner Wetzel still on at quarterback. Jacob Poor out of this game with an injury. He got hurt last week against Monmouth Roseville. Here's Sprinkle with the carry. Actually, that's uh, Augusta, 22, not 22. 32. And Augusta, boy, they blew that play dead. Uh, about a, a count or two early. Augusta carried the pile pass to 25, but... Augusta had the play blown dead after he got to the 25-yard line. They said his momentum was stopped, and then he actually went two more yards. But he gained a five for Trey Augusta, second and five for McComb from their own 25-yard line. A couple scores from around the uh, area. Blue Devils up 21-0 on Peoria Manual, an old Notre Dame foe. 
Hannibal up 14-7 against Mexico. Brown County trailing at halftime to Triopia, 8-6. That score is a bit surprising. Second and five for McComb from their own 25-yard line. Give it to the halfback, and the Raiders snuffed that play out. Walker Smith again there. Walker Smith, the one-man wrecking crew so far here in the second half. No gain on the play, maybe the loss of a foot. And it will be third and basically five for McComb. Well, it took me five minutes, but I found my full roster. And Jacob way, Abel checks in for QND at his defensive end spot. Ben Nord was the player who was in on that one tackle. I knew it was a Nord, but I, he's had too many brothers for me to remember right. which one is which. So third and five for McComb from their own 25-yard line. Tanner Wetzel sends Blake Driscoll in motion and pitches it wide to no one. Augusta pounces on the ball. I believe Trey Augusta got it, but maybe the Raiders did. Raiders say they do. Three, four Raiders say they do. Refs sort it out. Fourth down. Fourth down. But Tanner Wetzel just pitched the ball hoping Trey Augusta was there, and Augusta wasn't there, but he was fortunate that Trey Augusta hustled there and got the yeah. ball before QND did. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, I, you know, and the Bombers don't need to make, make excuses for him, but you do see kind of the effects of, you know, some of the injuries uh, that they've had. I mean, that, that play was just kind of goofy from the beginning. You're right, it was a pitch to nobody. Just timing's just not down. Austin Sparrow will punt it away again for McCall. Step back is true. Kick is away. High kick, far sideline, and it will go out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. Well, McComb started these drives on the 20. They can't go anywhere. Then they punted the Q&D, and Q&D started both drives at the 35. So we're playing basically on a 15-yard field here in the third quarter. Yeah, that part of the field's going to be real torn up. 48-0 Q&D leads. With the running clock, we have 235 left to go in this third quarter. Second possession for the second string offense here in the third quarter. Kellen Barnes looks to be the backup center. Max Memberlo, the second string quarterback. And we have a new deep back for QND out of the power eye, and that is Parker Kinsel. He takes the pitch, trying to turn the corner. He's grabbed and thrown down after a gain of about two. Kinsel, let's see what they finally spotted. Looks like a gain of about two for Parker Kinsel. It'll be second and eight for QND. Well, we, we've mentioned an awful lot tonight. Parker Kinsel just doing some more. He's just, uh, just a super spark club. Spark plug, 5'8", 150-pound sophomore, and uh, all sorts of hustle. Power eye for QND, Kinsel the deep back. Single receiver far side, second and eight for QND. Max Memberlo under center. We'll give it to Blake Hilgenbrink, who gets Oof. stuck by Reed Sprinkle. Hilgenbrink tried to bounce off the tackle. Kept his momentum going, but gained about two more to the 31 of McComb, and to bring up third and six for QND. Well, I mentioned it uh, early in that first quarter, but... You know, certainly a 48 to zero ball game. It didn't all come down to one play, but Blake Hilgenbrink still one of the real big plays of the game that helped Q and he got to the big lead they did. Yeah. And running down Williams Kelly on that kick return, terrific hustle play by the senior. Out of the power eye, third and six for Q and E from the Macomb 31. Send Frieden in motion towards the far sideline. He's running in place. And then they give it to Kinsel. Right up the gut, runs into the pile, and then submerges for a gain of about two more. And it will be fourth and about three for QND. Ball is at the 29-yard line of McComb. 40 seconds left in the third. I think QND will have to run another play for the yes, quarter. It's looking like it. There they go be about an eight second differential between the game clock and the play clock. Power icing receiver near side. Max Memberlo the quarterback. Kinsel the deep back. They bring Freed in motion towards the near side line this time. Boy, he was close to starting up field early. Kinsel takes the pitch and he'll have the first down, I think, barely. As the tackle was made by DJ Williams Kelly. And it looks like Kinsel needed four and he got four and a foot. Oh, now they move the ball back. So did he get the first down or not? I think it, yeah, it looks like he's past the line there. I believe They're he gonna did measure. get to 25. They're going to measure as the clock winds out for the end of the third quarter. We'll take a one-minute break and come back and see if the Raiders 
keep possession or turn it over on downs to start the fourth quarter. 48-0, QMD leads McComb on WTAD. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Financial Services Representative Michael Libman with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls. I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing and estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls. There were three plays before that run by Kinsel. And I'm looking out to see, and I think they were. I think that was fourth down, Kyle, and Kinsel was short by about half the football, so the Raiders do turn it over on downs. I'm a Mizzou grad. I learned to count, so there's not five downs. Well, I, was, yeah. I was burned 23 years ago by that. I'm not going to let it happen again. And I was the math major, so what do I know? 48-0, Q&E leads Macomb. Tim Kincher with Kyle Vemberlow. Bruce Terstegi, our producer, on this Friday evening. First game in the West Central Conference for the Raiders. They will be 1-0 in the conference, heading into next week's game at Fuzz Burgess Field against the Carthage, or excuse me, the Illini West Chargers. Macomb, first and 10. They send Williams Kelly in motion, and they tried to hand it off to someone, and they fumbled the ball, but Macomb jumped on it. Wetzel jumped on the fumble. It'll be second and 11 for Macomb. And D.J. Williams Kelly is hurt. And I think it may be time for him to leave the game, Kyle, because he's replacing an injured defensive end tight end. You don't need another one of those players hurt if you're McComb. No, you don't. You know, and Williams Kelly is probably another guy. I I'm surprised they haven't tried to use more. I mean, just, yeah. you know, they tried to get a ball to him last year in the playoff games uh, from his tight end spot, overthrew him a couple times. The guy is dangerous. We saw him on the kicker turn. McComb calls timeout because of Williams Kelly's injury. Or they're saying it's an official's timeout because of the injury. So, McComb trailing 48 nothing, and we have a timeout on the field. Now Williams Kelly is up and walking off. We we're going to take a break, but we'll keep it right here. 48 nothing, Q&E leading McComb with 11 minutes left to go in this contest. So we had the running clock two weeks ago when Alt Marquette was in town. We had the running clock last week when Hawaii thumped Q&E. Now we have the running clock this week with Q&E. Turning the tables on McComb. You know, you'd just think our scorekeeper was always in a hurry or something. You know, but, <laughs> you know that's actually the rule. QND's upcoming schedule at Illini West next week. Follow that up with a home game here against Chillicothe IBC, then the final home game of the year against the Pittsfield Sockies, and then a trip to West Hancock to take on the Titans. I believe that game is in Hamilton. Uh -huh. And then... Uh, Figures the regular season against Monmouth Roseville. Monmouth Roseville is the team beating Illini West here tonight. 28 to 8 at halftime. So after the injury timeout, McComb back at it. Second and 11 from their own 24 yard line. Bring the man in motion. It's Driscoll taking the handoff, trying to get the corner turned. He does. Sidesteps one defender, steps through another tackle, turns the corner, and is pushed out of bounds at the McComb 40 yard line for a gain of 14 for Blake Driscoll. Well, Driscoll probably one of the few bright spots for the Bombers yep. offensively. That time doing another nice job off left tackle. And a couple starts, a couple stops, and uh, first down for Driscoll. 41 yards on nine carries tonight for Blake Driscoll. He's by far the shining star for the McComb Bombers here tonight. First and 10, McComb from just outside their own 41-yard line. Wing T or the Veer, whichever you prefer. And Wetzel gives it to the first man through, and he bowls over a couple of Raiders. That's Reed Sprinkle. And he picks up about nine yards just short of midfield. We'll give Sprinkle a gain of eight. It'll be second and a short two for McComb. Sprinkle tonight has only carried it eight times, Kyle, for four yeah. positive yards. 
you know, I, I would have. I, I'm surprised he didn't have 25 carries so far. I just, again, I know uh, Cuny probably goes all out to stop him, so Coach Sears knew he'd have to uh, respond to that and adjust that and try to mix it up more. But and it looks like Tanner Wetzel is letting the playcock wind down before he yeah, snaps I, the ball here. Second and two. From the McComb 49, give it to the second man through. No, they give it to the first man through. And Sprinkle is being held up, held up, and now they blow the play dead. But Sprinkle has a first down for McComb. Takes it from the Bomber 49 to the Raider 46 for a gain of four. First and ten, Bombers. And they have two first downs on this drive to double their first down total for the game. First and ten, McComb from the Raider 47-yard line. 48-0 QND leads as they try and preserve the shutout here. McComb's starter still in there. Out of the veer. It's Wetzel. He's going to keep it himself. Sidesteps the defensive end and then gets pushed back. Mm. Good strong hit by the Raiders. Wetzel may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. He, in fact, lost a yard. Landon Hemming in on yeah. the tackle. Hemming with the initial hit. He held... Wetzel up and a couple of other second string defenders jumped in the punt. Hemming, one of the underclass quarterbacks, doing a nice job there on the defensive side of the ball. Nice job by Jacob Adele as well from his defensive end spot to force Wetzel back inside to help, uh, to allow Hemming to uh, come up and make that hit. They marked him at the line of scrimmage, so no gain on the play, second and 10. And give it to Augusta, who bobbled the handoff, but then got it the second time around and takes it inside the Raider 40 to about the 39 for a gain of about six, maybe seven. They do mark it at the 39 for a gain of seven. It'll be third and three for McComb. Augusta more successful with the second attempt to take the handoff. <laughs> I don't think it counts as a pass catch, <laughs> but it kind of looked like one. Out of the veer, wing to the far side. Ball in the far hash, third and three for McComb inside the Raider 40. And they pitch it wide. They pitch it to Driscoll. R Driscoll waiting for blocks. Now he finally gets the blocks. He turns the corner, and he'll have the first down at about the uh, Raider 35-yard line. That was a slow developing play, but Driscoll was patient enough to end up getting about four yards on the play, and I think got the first down. Yes, he did. Took it to the 35, first and 10 bombers. As the Raiders continue the very generous subbing, lots of, uh, lots of different... Lots of different names and faces out there. We'll try to bring them to you as they uh, collect some tackles. 6.50 left to go in this game. McComb has put together three first downs on this drive. Have it at the Raider 35-yard line, first and 10 bombers. Ball on the near hash. Out of the veer with the wing to the far side. He comes in motion. And it's a handoff to the wing back. And he will get to about the 30-yard line for a gain of five. This young man has returned a couple of kicks. No, it's Brady Cusato. That was number two? I thought it was. Brady Kozad, I think, is who. Kozad, okay. Yeah, that's a D, not an O. Okay. I thought the same thing. Right. When I was getting the uh, pronunciations before the game. So I think Kozad gets five yards. And it brings up second and five for McComb from the Raider 30 yard line. Wetzel under center. Wing T. Turns, gives it to the second man through this uh, Driscoll, and Driscoll gets two more inside the 30 to about the 28-yard line. It'll be third and three for the Bombers. Let's see if some of these uh, youngsters here for Q&E come up with a couple stops and short yards. Again, it certainly won't make uh, a difference in the ultimate outcome tonight, but you know maybe a chance to catch their coach's attention on film. At the Raider 28-yard line, it's third and about three for McComb. Send the wing back in motion and give it to Augusta. Augusta tried to spin off the pile but couldn't. He gained a couple yards, so it'll be fourth and one for the Bombers from the Raider 26-yard line. Kellen Barnes getting off the bottom of that pile. 6'1", 275-pound junior, clogging things up the middle there. I have McComb for 77 yards of total offense in this game, and what do you think, Kyle, about 35 of that, 40 maybe, on this drive alone? Yeah, probably so. Fourth and a long yard for McComb from 
just inside the Raider 27-yard line. Out of the Avere. They give it to Augusta. He runs into the pile, plows, 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 and he'll have the first down inside the 25 to about the 23. Pickup of about four for Augusta and a new set of downs for the Bombers. Did a good job keeping his feet moving there. Didn't have much going on there. Uh, kind of got caught up in a pile, spun back to his left, and picked up the first down for the Raiders. As this drive now with four minutes and 15 seconds left on the clock started as the fourth quarter started. Four first downs on the drive. It's taken the ball from the Raider 25, I believe it was. Yeah, they're about to the, or excuse me, the Macomb 25 to the Raider 22 to start this series of downs. Here's Kozad with the carry, and he takes it down to about the 16 for a gain of about six. And this is what we saw from the Macomb Bombers for eight quarters last year at the end of the season, Kyle. Just get five or six yards on first down. If you don't get the first down on the next carry, you got it on the third carry, and you just ground out drives and kept possession of the ball against the Raider defense. Gain of six, second and four for McComb. Ball at the Raider, 17-yard line. They see Wetzel keep it. He tries to turn the corner. And, wow, bounces off the pile and has the pile shoving forward inside the 10 to about the 5. That's a gain of 11 for Tanner Wetzel and first and goal Bombers. Augusta checks back in for the Bombers. He's just a freshman, so... You know, Jacob Poor, the normal quarterback who's hurt tonight, a sophomore, Augusta, just a freshman. So Raider fans can probably get used to those names here in the next couple of years. You'll probably hear it quite often when the Raiders and Bombers tee off in future years. From the Raider six, first and goal. Give it to Augusta, and he stood up right at the point of attack and pushed back. May have gotten a yard on the play. Let's see if they moved the ball marker, and it looks like, you know, he moved it forward about a foot, so... Gain of one for Augusta. It'll be second and goal for the Bombers from the Raider. Five-yard line. And it looked like Jonathan Horak for the Raiders was the first one to square up. A real nice tackle there on Augusta. Second and goal for the Bombers with 2.20 left to go in this game. q &E leading 48-0. McComb trying to avoid the shutout. Second and goal from the Raider five. Wingback comes in motion across the line of scrimmage. They pitch it wide to Driscoll, and he will turn the corner and score. Got it just inside the pylon, or no, he oh. was outside the pylon. They could say out of bounds at the one-yard line for Blake Driscoll. Gain of four, brings up third and goal from the one. Yeah, I agree. It looked like he had the angle on him. Uh, Carson Kroshinsky there. Kroshinsky hustles back out, able to get just enough on Driscoll to force him out as he's trying to dive. So, Bombers, last chance to get the ball in the end zone here. Well, they have third two more down. chances. Uh -huh. Third and goal from the one. And it will be Wetzel who gets stuffed at the line of scrimmage. They push, they push, they scrum, and okay. they score. Wetzel didn't get very far with, no, his, did. with his own uh, effort, but then his teammates helped to push him into the end zone, and Wetzel finally gets the Bombers on the board with a one-yard touchdown point. Um, well, it's really about a ten and a half. I know it's a running clock, but it, I mean, a ten and a half minute drive, so just about a minute and a half left in the game when Wetzel scored there. Again, the clock not stopping, so we're just over a minute now. And looks like the Bombers will go for two. No, they won't. Here comes Austin Sparrow. He better hustle if they want to get this attempt off before the game ends. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess they have 50 seconds to play with, but they're just now blowing the play in. So Austin Sparrow will attempt the extra point. He's more of a straight-on kicker than anything else. Snap is high, it's wide, and Wetzel has to run with the ball. And he breaks one tackle, looking for the corner of the end zone. He'll get there. So the snap back was high, untrue. Wetzel grabbed the ball on a bounce, turned the corner, broke a tackle, and takes it in for a two-point conversion, just like McComb drew it up. Wetzel with the two-point run, and that makes the score Q&D 48, McComb 8, with 29 seconds left to go in this contest. We'll keep it right here. And then at the end of the game, we'll take a long break. So the Raiders will raise their record to 3-1. and one. Macomb will fall to 1-3. and three. CUNY will take on Illini West next Friday night. Macomb will take on Taylorville next Friday night at Taylorville. I believe that game is in Taylorville. That of the Central State 8 still, I believe? That's on that 
piece of paper I gave you. What's that say? It's at Taylorville. At Taylorville, there you go. Yep. Yeah, that's Taylorville's non-conference game in the Central State, eh? Okay. So. 29 seconds left to go in this contest, and that was a good drive by the Bombers. Got about five or six first downs, took it about 70, 75 yards. Yeah, it did. You know, just, yeah, just, you know, nothing different than what we'd seen all night, just having more success against uh, some of the youngsters for the Raiders and uh, that they weren't able to have against some of the juniors and seniors. So a lot of Driscoll, sprinkle with some carries, Wetzel with a couple times around the end. We saw the freshman Trey Augusta, uh, you know, was a pretty quick running back, pretty quick freshman running back. 109 yards of rushing tonight for McComb. Nothing passing. McComb 0 for 4 tonight throwing the ball with two interceptions. So QND doesn't really have that, except for the passing of Joe McKay with 155 yards. QND only has 54, 56, 58, 64 yards rushing. 64, so, and Anders had a 20 something yard, 20. Yeah, he had a long run called yeah. back. So QND with. About 220 yards offense, McComb with about 150, yet it's 48-8 on the scoreboard. So after McComb's touchdown, oh, they told me this young man's name before the game, and I'm blanking on it for McComb. He just came out for football two weeks ago. Dan Krishmeyer or something to that effect, and his kick is short and a flag flies. But the clock will keep running, so there may not be another kick. By the time they get done discussing this, that may be the ball game. Yeah. As the refs make it a point to make sure this clock doesn't stop. I think that will be it. Nice the throw by the left Yeah, ring. the refs play a little pitch and catch. That was thrown from the 26, caught about the 50. q and &E's already starting across the field to shake hands with the Bombers. So q and &E's going to win it by the final of 48-8. Raiders now 3-1 and one on the season, 1-0 and oh in the conference. McComb falls to 1-3 and 0-2, and oh and we believe, in the conference. I'm not sure if that Pittsfield game was a conference, conference game or game not or non -conference. because they play later in the year. Right. QNE wins it, 48-8, back in three minutes. This is Raider football on WTA. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Financial Services Representative Michael Libman with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls. I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing in estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls. You adore and love was made for me. 